who are over 50% female. So shout out to 10 Pearls in, uh, and their uh, Pakistan uh, office that is representing uh, women developers. And thanks everyone for posting where you're from. I'll give a couple of shout outs. Oklahoma City's in the house and Massachusetts and uh, England and Florida and Jacksonville. Love Jacksonville and um, Florida and India, all over the world. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, keep on using that chat. If you hear something you like, post it. If you have a question, you can either post in the chat or you can post in the Q&A. Dennis, we can no longer see you, so uh, give us some video if you could. All right. And as soon as you, and as soon as you I'll do that. i up and be right back. <laughs> all right, Dennis is in Pakistan. We have video. We have, we have uh, his face, his <laughs> name. We are ready to go. Um, I uh, So we're going to talk for about 45 minutes for you all. Uh, you know, as you can see, uh, for those of you that haven't met me before, I like the high energy. I'm from New York. I talk fast, but we're recording this. We're going to send you this afterwards. So if we talk too fast, don't you worry about it at all. That's the number one question I get every single webinar I've ever done. Are you recording it? Are you going to send up the slides? Yes and yes, you're getting it all. So no worries at all. We also have prizes, so stick around. If you hear at the end, you can win a prize as well as some special offers uh, from, from, from our partners here today. Um, okay, Dennis, I'm gonna get the party started and hopefully we can see you soon. Um, but let's do this thing. Uh, we've got we've got the five-step formula for LinkedIn success. And uh, show. Yeah, slideshow. You know, we're, I'm very high tech. I, I've cool. already learned something. I was like literally messaging Jack, our COO, going, look in Pakistan for female developers because we're actually looking for developers right now and we'd like more women in our companies. So. You, you thought you would end up doing business with Apprentice. You might end up doing business with likable slash tech pearls after the fact. You never know. Exactly. You never know. So how to turn your time into LinkedIn into real profits. We've got uh, Apprentice, that's me today. Uh, we've got Vengresso, that is Vifica. And we've got Blitz Metrics, that is Dennis. It is May 2022 if you're watching the recording uh, years from now, and hopefully it's still relevant. Um, a little bit about me and my, my LinkedIn story, and then I will turn it over to Vivica and then uh, Dennis. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, a New York Times bestselling author of four books. Um, uh, fortunate enough to sell uh, my, my uh, first business with my wife last year. It's called Likeable Social Media Agency. Um, and uh, my, my main focus now is Apprentice, which is a platform that connects the best and brightest college students with entrepreneurs and small business owners. Talk more about that later. Um, my LinkedIn story, you know, I made a bet on LinkedIn and, and I won. <laughs> uh, a big thing about social media is getting involved really early. I was a really early participant in LinkedIn. Um, I noticed this, this program called LinkedIn Influencers. And I thought it was, I was fascinated by the caliber of people that were in LinkedIn Influencers. Barack Obama, Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, it, it was like a who's who of world leaders. And then I see a friend of mine who was a reporter for Inc. He was also uh, in, um, in the LinkedIn Influencer program. So I, I emailed him, Jeff, and I said, Jeff, crazy uh, question. Um, can you tell me about this LinkedIn Influencer program? And do you mind introducing me to somebody at, at the program? So he's like, sure, no problem. He introduces me to a guy named Chip, who is an editor at LinkedIn. And I am super nervous to kind of pitch him to join the LinkedIn influencer program. And I get on the phone. I'm never nervous, but I, I, this is like, seems like such a big deal. Cause like these guys are famous and rich and brilliant. And I'm me, I'm a schlub from New York. And, um, I get on the, uh, I get on the phone with Chip and the first thing Chip says is, listen, I read your first book, like on social media, I'm a big fan and I'd love to welcome you into the LinkedIn influencer program. And it was like transformative, honestly, for, for my life, for my businesses. Um, I, I was very, very fortunate to get lots of, of, of publicity and reach through the LinkedIn Influencer Program, a big part of how we, 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 we hit 700,000 followers, um, et cetera. But I'm certainly going to share all the things I learned along the way with you today. Um, without further ado, Vivica, how long? We've known each other for a long time, 10 years? More? Yeah, at least, at least. Maybe more than that. I, and, and my story is very similar to yours without being an influencer. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I started super early on LinkedIn. I stuck with LinkedIn mainly because at the time it was text based, like there were no visuals. And since I'm visually impaired or not, I'm not visually impaired. I'm graphically impaired. Um, I was like, yay, text based social media. Of course, that's changed. But I started early. I loved it. And that's where Wiley found me. So they actually I was blogging at the time with my blog, uh, LinkedIn to business. And at that point, there was a, you know, back in the day when LinkedIn had an open API, um, it was pulling my blog posts in. So Wiley found me and said, hey, would you write a book for us? And that's the one hour a day book. And I said, yes, if you change the name, they didn't. I wrote it anyway. Um, but <laughs> from from the LinkedIn marketing one hour a day, um, my producer, my editor, I guess, then at uh, Wiley ended up moving to lynda.com. And then he pulled me into lynda.com, which of course was later bought by LinkedIn Learning. And so that's been my kind of my my travels through LinkedIn. But I've been teaching and training on it for 16 years. Like that's insane when I think about it. But yeah, still a fan. <laughs> and about six, five and a half years ago, um, rather than doing the solopreneur entrepreneur thing by myself, because I was honestly, I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to go be a life coach or something. I mean, I just, I need to do something else. Um, Mario Martinez, who's our uh, Ben Grasso CEO, reached out and said, hey, do you want to create like a super company? And I said, no. Um, and then he said, really? Because we've got these people on board. And then I said, okay. And so uh, we ended up creating uh, Ben Grasso about you know, five and a half years ago. And now we're transitioning into a SaaS company. So we're, we're moving from a service and a training company into a SaaS company with Fly Message, which I'll talk about later. But that's kind of my life at least the past 16 years of it in three minutes. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. And uh, Dennis, I don't know if you're able to get a, 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 a video from Pakistan, but uh, you're up. Tell us a little bit. Do a quick introduction if you could, sir. So I'm known for Dollar Dave. Spent a billion dollars on Facebook, Google, LinkedIn ads. I maxed out the connections, which is 5,000 on Facebook. So I had to move to LinkedIn. And now LinkedIn is my number one network. I only have, I think, 33,000 followers, but I found way more value on LinkedIn than any other social network. The CEO of LinkedIn, Jeff, was my boss at Yahoo way back in the day. No, are you serious? Ago. Yeah, and he That's said, so cool. and I took it kind of personally, but he said, Facebook is where you go to waste time, and LinkedIn is where you go to invest time. And that ended up being true, because I've had some posts go absolutely viral. You know, like Vivica or Dave or I will speak at a conference. I see Dave and I have spoken at so many conferences, and we get a ton of LinkedIn requests that often turn into deals. It's the most amazing lead gen platform ever, especially when you learn how to do LinkedIn ads with all the different targeting, doing lead gen, boosting posts, creating company figure pages, all that kind of stuff. And I, I think LinkedIn is sort of the redheaded stepchild when it comes to social networks because Microsoft, when they bought them, didn't take advantage of the full ad platform. So I think link, LinkedIn is still by far my favorite ad network. I can't wait to learn from you. <laughs> I'm going to show you stuff that might get me banned, but I think it'll be fun. <laughs> All right, great. Without further ado, let's jump into this content. Uh, we're going to go fast and furious, like I said, but feel free to stop us, ask questions along the way. Um, and um, yeah, let's rock and roll. Here's what we're going to cover today for you, how to find and engage a hyper-targeted audience on LinkedIn, LinkedIn strategy to put revenue in your business fast. I mentioned this in a couple of my emails. We've driven several million dollars of revenue over the last 10 years between uh, between Apprentice and Likeable. How to plan and, and execute a rock star LinkedIn content calendar, the tech tools you need to grow your LinkedIn presence, and exactly how to use them. Step one, find your niche. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I if you don't mind me jumping in here. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make on LinkedIn, whether it's profiles, company pages, sharing content, reaching out to engage, is they try to be everything to everyone, right? But we all know the riches is in the niches or niches if you're French Canadian. And so it is so important to not only know who your audience is, and Dennis is going to show some really cool stuff that you can do with ads later, but you have to know your buyer persona and your, your LinkedIn profile needs to be buyer centric. It is not a resume, folks. It is a resource that you can use to speak to your potential audience and don't try to be everything to everyone. Have a very, very, very clear 
visual of who your buyers are and everything you do on your LinkedIn profile, all the content that you share, your messaging when you reach out to someone needs to have those demographic, their education, their job experience, their interests and their traits, as well as their points of pain. What are their challenges? What do they desire? What do they dream about? Because your content needs to be speaking to that no matter where it is on LinkedIn. So if you don't know who your niche is or niche is, and if you're trying to be everything to everyone, you're, you're starting out with a fail. Like hopefully everyone on this call understands that, but it is by far the biggest mistake I, that I see on LinkedIn is people either creating a resume rather than a resource out of their profile and, and pushing their, their, the features of their product or service rather than talking about the value or the solutions and, and just ignoring their audience entirely. So you've got to be focused on those individuals with everything you do on LinkedIn. Totally agree. Uh, the more focused you are, the better. By the way, this is true in LinkedIn, but this is also true in all of social media and it's really true in all of business. The number of times I'm mentoring a small business owner and entrepreneur and I find myself saying, how can you focus more? Say no to this, say yes to this. That is really, really a valuable insight. Take one thing away from today. Uh, I'm sorry to stop you though, but if you keep the ball rolling. Well, actually, I think this is where we're going to get Dennis. I'm kidding. In. Dennis, Dennis, yes. Dennis, do we have you on video yet or are we going to rock the audio? Either way, you're up. All right. Well, the, the beauty with these audiences on LinkedIn, unlike what happened on Facebook and Twitter is you can still target by exactly what that interest is, the company they're at, the job title. And I can tell you, and not just in B2B lead gen, but what I've done for media is I'll be featured in an article. You know, you guys are like, you know, Inc, Entrepreneur, Forbes, whatever. And I'll target people that work at CNN, people that work at the Wall Street Journal, people that work at your competitors if you want to poach for employees. And it has been an absolute gem. I'm surprised most people don't do it. I ran it by AJ Wilcox, who is arguably the best in the world at LinkedIn ads. And I even yep. went to Mountain View and visited LinkedIn there. And they said this strategy is completely white hat. It's media manipulation, competitor targeting. But think about, you know, anyone that you want to reach all the way down to who they're friends with, you can target on LinkedIn and you run it at 10 bucks a day. It's absolutely insane. Dennis, this is complete genius. I used to do this on Facebook, as I'm sure you did, and then Facebook changed the uh, rules so you couldn't do it anymore. So, uh, yeah. guys, this is this is treasure. This is a tr this slide here is literally worth. I mean, it's worth millions, depending on the scale of your business right now. This is pure treasure. So, thank you very, very much for this. And Apprentice team, we need to get moving with this like today. <laughs> yeah, I just literally messaged Stan, who who um, is our master uh, coach. And I just saw him in the audience. I just messaged him and said, make sure to share this with Jack. <laughs> That's brilliant, Dennis. Yeah, you know, I was I got featured in the New York Times and Wall Street Journal talking about what happens with Facebook's data privacy and Cambridge Analytica. And I took that and I targeted people that work at CNN and other outlets. And a few days later, I got invited by CNN to their headquarters to speak live on this topic in front of three and a half million people. And I argued with Mark Zuckerberg on live TV because I used this LinkedIn tactic. Oh my God, that is freaking brilliant. Okay, well, to dial it back a bit, um, <laughs> when you are trying to create that brand on LinkedIn, and so that's paid, you're, you're gonna be doing that through paid ads. Um, Shawanda asked that question. If you wanna dial it back a little bit, um, this is all free, what I'm about to share with you now. You wanna make use of employee advocacy. So whether you have five employees, 15 employees, 5,000 employees, you wanna make sure that your employees are representing your brand. And that means creating a template that they can all use because no one's gonna just go and say, you know, oh, I'm a sales guy for Vengresso. I'm just gonna, even though this is what we sell, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go and on my own, create a great background image and create a, you know, a buyer-centric headline. And I'm gonna go find some kind of, like, sorry, no employee is gonna do that. You gotta make it super simple for sales and everybody else in your, your company by creating templates. You can do that based on your company page, but you want to have a couple choices, I think, of background image or, or um, you know, header 
for people to choose from and you want them to match ish your company page we've got Brian is brilliant. He's, he, he does all of our graphics, thank goodness. And we probably have five to 10 different background images, no matter what initiative we're doing. So whatever marketing sprint we're doing, we've got background images to match. We send it out, you know, through, um, through our, our file sharing system, which I hate. And, uh, and then we can pick whatever one we, we want. Same thing with headlines, because this is all above the fold. Your headline shouldn't be title at company. If I said CVO at Vengresso, you would think I was like a vitality officer at a soup company. Like no one knows what a Vengresso or even a CVO is. I'm the chief Vivica officer. Woo! It's chief visibility officer, but no one knows that. So I want to use that 220 characters in my headline to tell my audience, you know, I identify my audience identify, I understand what their points of pain are, <clears throat> excuse me, what their frustrations are for our audience. It's, it's prospecting. And I want to tell them I can help you with prospecting. And because it's 220 characters, I can still say my company name in there. So things like that, um, picking media, sharing links to media that they can add in the feature section. Like just those three things alone is going to make a huge difference in your company's brand. Now we recommend, you know, a profile for the entire thing, education, experience, etc. But that's that's definitely what we recommend that you do. You also want to make sure you have super clear guidelines on what and what is and is not acceptable to post. So it's your employee's choice what they put up on their profile. They own it. They can they can use the template or not, but at least provide it to them. But when it comes to sharing content, you actually have some say in that. So you can have a social media policy and you should have a social media policy that lets them know what they can and can't do. Now, don't be too restrictive or you're going to really block the ability for to utilize the employee advocacy and, and branding, but do have a clear policy. So if they're out there making political or religious statements that are contrary to your company's belief, you've got you know, you, you can enforce it. You, you've got some actions you can take. And then finally, there's a very, very cool feature for those of you who manage your company page on LinkedIn called recommended content. You can literally write content out and we're going to talk about what's best content in just a minute, but you can write that content out. Your employees simply go to the company page. It's going to open on my company tab. It's the second tab in. All they have to do is click share and post, and it will post to their own profiles as if they wrote it natively, which LinkedIn loves. So you get to create the post. The marketing team gets to create the post with all the good juju that we're about to share. And then the employees just come in and go, eh, I'll pick that one, share, post, two clicks, done for the day. And so if you make use of these three things, it is going to explode your visibility and your branding. And that is going to 100% increase those inbound leads. So that's what I have to say. That's amazing. You know, I, it's funny. I, um, I still get a little bit less now than I used to, but I still do get small business owners and entrepreneurs that are nervous about their employees being on LinkedIn because they think LinkedIn is where they're going to go look for another job. And yes, that could be one thing that they do with LinkedIn, but guess what? You can't control whether they do that or not. But you That says more about your company than it does about the employee or LinkedIn. That's right. That's right. But you <laughs> can leverage these tools and these ideas to build your presence and to generate more revenue for your company. And so I, I, I am a big fan of openness uh, and trust when it comes to your employees using LinkedIn, for those of you that are still on the fence about this. And I think, I, you know, I'll start talking here about creating organic content, but I know that both Dave and Dennis can really jump in. Um, yes, create organic content. And you can see on this slide, um, Dennis's content, Notice how he's using a lot of that 3,000 characters. Now, you don't have to do this each and every time, but, and Dennis, I think we'll speak more to this, LinkedIn's algorithm is focused on dwell time. So the more content you have there that is relevant to your audience, remember, always keep your audience in mind. 
the more content that's relevant, the longer they're going to read through that, maybe click through and look at a PowerPoint that shows up as a carousel or a PDF that shows up as a carousel. They're going to st spend time on that and LinkedIn's going to go, oh, okay, people are spending time on this content. Let's open it up a little bit more. And then you get people engaging on it, liking it, commenting on it, sharing it. And LinkedIn goes, oh, okay, we're going to open it up a little bit more. But if you just like share a link, sorry, it's not going to happen. I've got 47, 48,000 followers, not because I'm awesome like Dennis and Dave. I wish I was. I'm not that cool. I've just been on LinkedIn for an awful long time. Precisely so, because you're awesome. Precisely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. But, but if I don't actively engage that 47,000 people, like LinkedIn, first of all, rarely shows my content to everybody, like maybe never. Yeah. Um, and so... I need to make it interestingly enough that a large enough percentage of my followers engage upon it that LinkedIn goes, okay, we're going to open it up. We're going to open it up. We're going to open it up. And that's what makes it go viral. But part of that is using as much as possible that 3000 characters, putting in those calls to action. If you don't tell someone to like read or comment or share below, they're not going to do it. You know, use emojis to attract the human eye. If that's your audience, use what we call PVC. So you always want to personalize it to your audience. You always want to add value, duh. And you always want to use that call to action, PVC. So now I'm going to shut up and let Dennis really give you the gold because he's got, you know, his stuff goes way more viral than mine. So that post on the right got two and a half million organic views. And it's a story. That, so the best things are when you write broetry. This is, these are called broetry one sentence, one paragraph things because 70% of the traffic is on mobile. So you need to make sure that it's easy to scroll. You can't have these long paragraphs, whether it's 3,000 characters or not. And what happens is the psychology is I'm opening a loop. So you can see here it says I charge $2,000 for a $100,000 project, yet the client was pissed. So now I've opened a loop. Well, what are they pissed about? So I answer it, then I open another loop. So you keep opening and closing loops, and that's what increases dwell time. And as Vivica said, the likes and the shares don't count. You should never hit share on someone else's post it just doesn't count it won't get any traction what you do is copy that post and then give them credit tag them don't use a ton of hashtags don't try to have a certain number of characters or whatnot that's just gaming the system use a variety of content like vivica said try snippets of videos try a couple quotes try highlighting employees try something interesting that you observe i posted a picture of myself this morning landing in karachi pakistan where the the company well, this, the government was greeting me and they made a gigantic poster, which is crazy, like 20 feet, whatever long with my face on it. Dennis, welcome to Karachi, Pakistan. So I took a picture of it and the thing has gone viral, right? And some things go viral and they don't, maybe one in 10. But most of you guys that are in sales and marketing are so self-promotional instead of telling stories and doing PVC, like Vivica said, that it doesn't go anywhere. When you make a post, LinkedIn will show it to the first 2% as kind of a trial, 2% of your audience. So I have only 33,000 followers compared to Dave's 600,000 and, you know, Vivica's 30,000, but I will have posts that will go 100,000, 200,000 people in reach. And the number one thing that drives that, it's not because I'm trying to go viral or I have a lot of followers. It's because I'm going for engagement. I'm getting, I'm saying something that causes them to comment instead of just clicking like. Likes don't count much. LinkedIn verified that for us a couple of weeks ago. It's the commenting. So if you want to get more commenting, yeah, yeah. If people are commenting on your stuff and, and and you comment back, or they say, "Wow, that's really cool," and you say, "Well, why do you think that is?" or "Why don't you give us a tip on how to do this?" You leave it open. You will literally get three times as much gauge, engagement on a post, and that post, instead of like on Facebook lasting a day, we right. see it last sometimes four days to a week. Right? What do you guys see? I see. I see some posts go two weeks. Yeah, yeah. I'll be like, didn't I post that 110 years ago? It was only two weeks ago, but it's amazing. It's so much stickier than than the I other have social. posts from five, six years ago that come. Yeah, I don't it doubt that. Far <laughs> the longest it has by far the longest shelf life with posts. The, the 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 last thing I want to add, my my content hack for you all is to focus on LinkedIn's newest products, and this works yes. quite again across all social networks. Every time. A social network like LinkedIn uh, launches a new product, a new feature, they're going to promote that more. They're going to weigh that more heavily in their algo. So for instance, right now, the LinkedIn newsletter is yep. a very popular product. So y'all should be creating LinkedIn newsletter posts. 
Uh, live video, a little bit less now than, 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 than several months ago, but still, live video is still one of the newer uh, uh, products. Create live videos. Like Dennis said, the best thing to do is to test a whole bunch of things, see what you're most comfortable with, but always be looking out for the, the newer products and features because the algo is going to be weighted more heavily for those. The other one, polls, but that's a whole other webinar. Yeah. But yeah, uh, polls are polls, huge. Polls are huge. The only thing I would add about polls, like, like um, don't, don't do a poll just for the sake of it. Make sure there's some content, some value, some meaning behind it. But yes, polls are like, yeah, they're still huge. Yeah, not only um, should it have something behind it, like use it as a tool, use it as a research tool, use it as a prospecting tool. Like there's so many cool things that you can do with, with polls. But again, that's a whole other webinar. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Dennis, we can see you again. This is very Yay! Hey, here I am. I have a face made for radio. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so crazy. That's what I've been told for years. Holy cow. What that's else? Uh, content factory. Okay. So all of us, we don't have time to mess around with all the different social networks and to try to blog and write articles and do Zooms and have a podcast and do whatever it is. So here's the answer in a non-spammy way that doesn't require ghostwriting. Literally on this production column, that there's four columns there. If you are doing Zoom calls like this, if you have client calls, if any kind of long form video content, you can chop it up. I like to use a tool called Descript, but some people, they like to use frame.io or auto.ai or whatever their favorite tool is. But the key is you can chop it up into different pieces and then you can post it in that third column and make derivative assets. So these are social media posts. These are blog posts. I have done this. It's completely white hat. I've asked my friends at Google. They said there's no duplicate content penalty. I asked Jason Miller when he was running yeah. global content marketing at LinkedIn. And he said it is totally okay to reuse content. You can take your best blog post and turn it to a LinkedIn post, right? Right now, you know, I'll, this, is, this is proof. I have the number one best-selling book in social media on Amazon. It's been the best-selling book for the last four and a half weeks ever since it went live and it's on TikTok ads, but I didn't even write the book. It was just a series of videos that I chopped up and put on LinkedIn. I turned into articles, I mailed to our email list. And so you can create so much derivative content in that third piece. What I want you to do, the, the whole key behind this inception model is the production of the content is separate from the distribution of the content and then things like boosting. LinkedIn, my favorite thing to do which no one seems to know about is, you know how you can create a, you know how you have a profile and you have a company page, right? That's what most people know. You have many user profiles, many employees, and then a company page, right? But you can create a company page that is called Vivica Von Bros. And you can call, you can have a company page that's called Dave Kirpin and run ads. Don't do the other thing. Don't do a personal profile as a company page, but yeah, company page called Dave Kirpin, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and you can boost it. And LinkedIn has said it's totally okay. I've tested it. So whatever our best posts are that have worked organically, I put it on either the company page or the personal company page, and it works like a charm. And that way you get more. Whatever's driven sales, whatever's driven engagement, whatever's driven leads, you can absolutely recycle the heck out of it. Then I'll take my best LinkedIn posts, and then I'll turn them into blog posts. I'll push them over to Facebook. I'll take my best Facebook posts, and I'll push it over to LinkedIn. And I'm literally getting 50 times more value just by applying these techniques to the content factory here. This content is insane, um, but I'm going to keep us moving because I promise we move fast and we're only on slide eight. So let's go. This is all Dennis, man. This is Dennis and here you. for you on the, on, on the ad. Okay. Look, I, I totally get there's lots of different ad products on LinkedIn, but you need to create things that don't look like ads. So the best thing to do when you choose an objective is choosing engagement because that is mimicking what's already working organically. So it's like cheating because whatever's worked well organically already in the newsfeed is going to work well with ads and it doesn't look like an ad. So that and lead ads are going to work pretty well. If you're spending enough money, like $1,000, $2,000 a day and are getting you know 30 plus leads per week, you can start to really optimize to a cost per lead. But most companies can't do that except the bigger guys in B2B. So simply take your best posts that are engaging, that maybe talk about your product in a way that doesn't look like an ad. Maybe it's a, a snippet of a Zoom call and don't have it in landscape because that, that looks like an ad. And don't have it where there's hashtags. Don't have it where the call to action at the end. Like just don't do things that are obviously ads. And I think you're gonna find you're gonna get more
more comments that turn into lead sales, you're going to get more people just hitting you up on other channels because they saw you on LinkedIn and your marketing is just going to be more effective. So the whole point is advertising on LinkedIn is amplifying what's already working organically. It's throwing fuel on the fire. So you don't need to learn all this LinkedIn campaign structure, bidding strategy, targeting, literally just boost the posts that have worked the best on your company page, choosing engagement as the objective, narrow targeting on exactly who you want, and then limit to like a $2 cost per click or a $3 cost per click. If you do that and your content is good, you're going to get results that are way better than Facebook because LinkedIn will optimize based on OCPM. So I've, I've gotten $2, $3 clicks all day long and I see other people that suck. They're like $30 cost per click and the quality is not any better. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm learning so much myself. This is really just phenomenal. Uh, uh, run A-B testing is on there. So uh, talk, talk to us a little bit about A-B testing, Dennis. A-B testing is if you have enough volume, but now we're moving towards just single posts that are working really well. If you have a winner and you, you want to refine it, so Larry Kim calls this unicorn children, right? If you have something that's generated a ton of leads, you can start to A-B test where you can change one, you're, you're fine tuning the title or the targeting or the image or one particular aspect, but you only A-B test when you have a winner. So if you're chopping down a tree, you're not going to use sandpaper to chop down the tree. You're going to chop it down. And then once you have it kind of the way you want, then you use sandpaper at the very end. That's how we think about A-B testing. Do not come in and just make thousands of combinations like you could on Google where you have lots of keywords times headlines times copy. Like you can't do that on LinkedIn because the cost of traffic is too high and their system's not smart enough to optimize for you. Awesome. Okay, so I do see some folks saying that the, the slides are not maximized for you. I think that's on you, but just in case, I'm going to unspotlight us. And I think that should help as well. I think if they click view on the top right, it should switch it around. I'm pretty sure they can maximize. Yeah, yeah but but just, I, just in case, I think that'll make it even easier for folks if they're on speaker view. Um, be careful if you're on speaker view, you might see us way too big. Then you, know, <laughs> you want to look at the slides, not uh, uh, not on um, not on um, on uh, on us. Yeah. Okay, this yeah, is, yeah. I, I love this slide, Dennis, because you know I've been I've been uh, I've been preaching the hyper targeting. Me uh, too. Many, many many years. Tell me why not to hyper target on LinkedIn. Well, this is a Goldilocks thing because you don't want it to the reach too big or the target too big or too small. So. Too big is generally is going to be over a hundred thousand or, or over a million because then because LinkedIn is not smart like Google and Facebook where they're going to seek out and sub target for you. So LinkedIn, you do have to hit. You have to know your audience in terms of their job title, their company, their interests, what magazines they follow, the organizations they're a part of. So you do have to do that. But some people will abuse hyper targeting because they'll say people who have their sales title is sales rep and they work at Oracle and they live in California and they're more than 35 mm -hmm. years old and they have a dog that has diabetes. Like you can't do, you, you can't go down that far because even though it's LinkedIn and they have, you know, whatever, a billion users, you're, you're just going to end up screwing yourself. And the audience estimator on the right where they say that, you know, the audience keeps getting, yeah. they, they estimate how big the audience is, is highly inaccurate, especially when you're stacking targeting. So what I like to do is go for audiences that are, especially for like biz dev or lead gen that are like a couple, a, a thousand to maybe like 10,000, anything that's hmm. down to like a hundred people where you're uploading an email list of prospects you got who scanned the card at the conference or whatever. And there's only like 50 people or a hundred people, their, their system just can't optimize. I mean, I guess you could do a reach campaign, but don't just because you can hyper hyper target, don't go that small. It used to work on Facebook, but Facebook took away detail targeting for this specific reason. They did. By the way, um, for those of you asking, Dennis had a major client that was a diabetes medicine for dogs. So that's why he used that example. Uh, some folks wanted to uh, uh, understand there. Um, but thank you. That That is, that is uh, instructive. And as you guys can see, great rule of thumb, uh, you know, over 50,000 uh, for text ads, over 50, 15,000 for uh, message ads. I'm going to zip us through using a content calendar. A calendar will help you plan and prioritize your content over time and allocate your resources. I know for a lot of you guys, a lot of this is very advanced stuff and, and, and you want some of the basics too. So, uh, so, so maintaining a calendar ensures that you have time to proofread your content before posting it, plan for the future rather than just the immediate present. 
so many folks will attend a webinar like this and they'll get super excited and they'll do, they'll take one or two things and they'll implement them like this week or next week and then you'll get super, super busy and things will fall by the wayside. Well, a content calendar doing that this week or next week will make sure that the content is going for a long, long time to come. So what's important here, who owns the content, what's the title, what's the theme, what's the target audience look like, what are your, what are your KPIs in terms of traffic or engagement, what's your CTA, call to action, what are the keywords and hashtags, if any, um, how are you scheduling the content, um, there are lots of tools to schedule content or you can plan it somewhere and then schedule it uh, and, then, and then post it organically. Here's just one example of a content uh, uh, calendar. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, how often should I post content? And the answer is very, very tricky because if your content is crap, then you should never post it. And if your content is great, you can post it every day, multiple times a day, uh, you know, depending on how big your audience is. The, the great content always finds a home and content, why, why are you posting it, right? If it's too self-promotional, if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's not going to resonate with your audience. Um, so I, I use the very, very basic, uh, take off your marketing cap, uh, 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 and put, and put on your, your, your consumer cap. If you were scrolling through the feed on LinkedIn, would you stop to comment? Or, or like, or share? Would you be interested in that content? Would that content make you want to learn more and keep reading? If the answer is yes, great, it's great content. Share content like that every day. And if the answer is no, well then find better content. That's a more important question than how often should you post. Dave, that is, uh, Excel Data Proton, will that take them to that page right there? Yeah, this is an example okay. from both guys, yeah. Okay, perfect. I just popped it into chat for everybody. So five uh, templates uh, to consider for content calendars. Uh, HubSpot's got a good one. CoSchedule's got a good one. Backlinko, uh, conversion-minded social media content calendar template, and uh, EvenX. And we can send you guys the links later as well. Again, we're sending out all the slides to you guys uh, later. Let's talk about the tech tools you need to grow your LinkedIn presence and exactly how you use them. There's a lot of these AI tools that have come out of GPT-3 which is from the OpenAI Foundation. So it's you know Elon Musk and the founders of Google and all of them can write content so well, you can't even tell that it's the bot. So probably the most wow. popular one came from Dave Rogemesser who started Proof and that's called, they, it was called ConversionNet AI, then called Jarvis, but they got sued by Disney. Mm. And now it's called the Jasper. And now there's one that's, that's specifically just for LinkedIn called Taplio from Alex Berman, who's the cold email king. And this AI, you just put in a topic and it'll spin out all these posts and you can look at who else is doing well on particular topical categories or particular companies. And it's cheating because you can just have a whole month of content scheduled out. I consider this slightly gray hats. It could potentially be unethical. Google said that it's not okay if they catch AI generated content, but they can't, they, they can't spot it because the AI is so good. So what I recommend is use the AI to get you to 95% and then put in your own phrasing, your own spin, put in some pictures, some videos, other kinds of stuff. And now you've got the best of both worlds. So I don't believe in full automation, but these AI tools that do deep faking, like Descript, where they're able to like say, say things in my voice that I didn't say, you're going to see every day I see another set of AI tools that blow my mind that I can literally have a webinar where Vivica, say, I can take this webinar where Vivica says something and have her say things that she didn't actually say and put it on Dave Kirpin's face and you won't be able to tell. And oh, say, man. It, say it not just as Dave Kirpin's voice, but say it in the way Dave Kirpin would, you, would do it based on his vocabulary. That's where the AI is now. It's scary. That is crazy, crazy scary. And I just want to second Dennis in saying that, you know, AI can get you so far, but you should absolutely customized content, pictures and videos is a really, really good, authentic, actual you, pictures and videos is a really, really yeah. good way to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. And I'm I'm like so anti full automation on LinkedIn. Number one, LinkedIn's against it. Um, but but also just for all of the reasons just stated. However, um, our tool, FlyMessage.io, is really it's not automation. It's it's a productivity tool. What it allows you to do, it's a Chrome extension right now, but. Um, the apps are coming and all the other extensions for all the other browsers are, are, are coming soon too. Um, but it is a text expansion software that has templates built right in. And what I love about it um, compared to some of the other text expansion tools out there is, well, we own it, but also um, it has things like rich text inside it. So, you know, not for LinkedIn because you can't use rich text on LinkedIn, but certainly for things like Gmail's. Um, any kind of Google Forms you're filling out, anything like that. Uh, one way I use FlyMessage.io all the time is, and, and Dave and Dennis do this, uh, all, we're always getting asked for our bios and our pictures. So rather than like searching through all my files and looking for all my bios and looking for my pictures, I've got them all in, uh, in a, what we call fly cuts. And I just type in long viv and bloop, there's my long bio, my short bio, all my images, all my socials, all my links, and then the, the person on the other end can take and choose what they want. Um, similarly, for LinkedIn replies, right? I get hundreds of invitations a day. If you're on this webinar, please invite me to connect, but let me know you're on this webinar. Otherwise, you're going to get one of my fly messages, which is called ELI Gen, which is a video LinkedIn generic reply because I don't have time. To, to go through and see who you are and see if we make a good connection or not. So I have all that just built right into Fly Message. It's a couple taps and boom, the product's done. So you can scan the QR code. Thank you, Harrison, for putting that up. I'll pop the link in there. We got a couple people uh, saying that Fly Message is awesome. Thank you so much. It's free right now, folks. It's 100% worth using. It is gonna save you so, 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 so much time not only on LinkedIn, but you know, on all of your engagement. And what I like about it, and then I'll stop talking, some of the templates have that PVC I was talking about earlier, personalize, add value, and a call to action, have the PVC built right in. You just build out that template depending on who you're speaking to, and then all you have to remember is one or two or three keystrokes and you're good to go. Awesome. Um, we are going to get to all your questions in uh, just a moment. We also have a grand prize to give away. Um, so start uh, thinking uh, of your questions, posting your questions. I saw one already that I'm just going to jump in and, and answer. Uh, Giotti asked, should you share a press release on LinkedIn? Um, probably not. So I'll go back to my what I said about content. Most press releases are written really poorly. Um, if, if, if it is, uh, in fact, written very poorly and uh, more of a pitch, than a story, then no, you shouldn't share it. If it's written really well as an actual story that is media ready, then yeah, then probably then, then it probably is a lot more appropriate uh, to share uh, on um, on uh, uh, LinkedIn. Um, Vivica mentioned um, Vangresso's uh, free software. I do have an offer as well. I told you guys a little bit about Apprentice at the beginning. Uh, we are a managed marketplace that connects the best and brightest college students in the world, Harvard, Cornell, Berkeley, top, top students, brilliant, brilliant young people with SMBs and entrepreneurs. So let's say you watch this content, you're like, this is all amazing stuff, but who the heck is going to execute it? I can't hire somebody full time for this, and I don't think I can do it all myself. Feel a little overwhelmed by it. An apprentice could be a perfect solution. Uh, if you book a demo from this webinar using five steps to li.com or you scan that QR code, uh, and you end up joining us, you get your first 40 hours free. Pretty awesome deal, if you ask me. Um, so so I will leave this slide up for a moment while I take your questions. Before I do that, Dennis, uh, I don't know if you want to do a quick plug, of course, for anything at Blitz, feel free to, sir. Here's my plug. Anything that you thought was valuable that you heard from Dave Kirpin or me or Vivica or someone else in the comments, I want you to tweet that and tag me, I have a blue check mark and 75,000 followers, I will retweet you. That is my gift to you guys. Because the whole thing with LinkedIn is you, you hear people say you gotta provide value. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, I believe it means honoring other people that have done great things instead of talking about yourself, you know, beating your own chest. So I wanna honor that. I have so much value, I, I get so much value just being around Dave 
and they've got just their energy and their knowledge. So go ahead and share that and, and I'll retweet it. By the way, I have the number one selling book on social media on Amazon. It, so if you do a search for TikTok ads and you buy that, I'm happy to give you a little bonus training to, so that you went on TikTok and reuse what you have working on TikTok or sorry, what's working on LinkedIn, you can reuse that in the TikTok. Just speak them to your, just speak those words, speak the, the, the post that you have in the TikTok and you'll find it'll work just as well. Amazing. Dennis, I'm so, oh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, taking uh, Dennis up on that because we're we're starting in on TikTok. So, and my, yeah. I, my I'm, I'm sucky on it. So I'm, I'm so taking you up on that, Dennis. You're good <laughs> at it. Like you, I would take snippets of what you said here, but do it to your face, 15 to 22 seconds. And that's your TikTok. You don't have to sing or dance. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, because Dennis uh, asked you all to tweet, I'm going to say that the book giveaway is going to be for one person that tweets uh, and tags Dennis or me or Vivica, and we'll choose that person randomly in a few minutes. So send out a tweet. Um, uh, feel free to tag us. Well, you have to tag us if you want to win. And you win my, a, a copy of Likeable Social Media 3rd Edition from me, but I'm going to add Vivica's book and Dennis's book uh, brought to you by Apprentice. And yes, I will pay for them, Vivica and Dennis. I'm not putting you on the spot to give away books. Uh, but we'll give away a copy of each of our books to one person uh, who tweets in the next few minutes uh, and shares uh, one thing that you learned, a piece of insight, something that you found valuable that you know your followers on Twitter will hopefully also find uh, valuable. You can tag any of them. You can tag uh, uh, LinkedIn expert. You can tag at Dave Kirpin, or you can tag uh, to at Dennis Hugh. You can tag all three. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm going to put all three in the uh, chat for everyone. I think I, sh I accidentally did not share my my tag. So LinkedIn expert. And keep those questions coming in. We're going to get to them in just a moment. Those are your Twitter uh, options to tag to win our grand prize. I'm going to get us back on the apprentice offer here. Okay, questions. We've got uh, Kevin Briley. We work together in EO. Awesome. Great to see you again, Kevin. Long time no see. Robin's asking my favorite question. <laughs> will you get the slides? Yes, you will. Everyone that signed up will get both the recording and the slides. Thanks for asking. And that is answered, and that is answered, and that is answered. Okay, we have some folks asking about Octopus. I don't feel that qualified to, to chat about Octopus. I know it's one of the automated uh, posters. Uh, Dennis or Vivica, any thoughts on Octopus? I, you know, we don't use it at Vingresso. I'm, I'm actually a fan of Octopus, um, but as far as the, the question, as far as employee advocacy, I, it's been five years since I used Octopus. So honestly, I don't know if they've got an employee advocacy tool and I don't know if it, it, if it wraps into HubSpot. So that'll report who's doing what. Um, we use every social for that. Uh, it's got gamification, so it's very easy to see who's doing what and who's winning. Um, another great tool is a live social. It's a seismic tool called live social. So that's that's another great tool out there. Um, there's there's some super employee advocacy tools. I just don't know if if, if Octopus has that built in now. Awesome. I'm, I'm very excited about this one. I'm going to take the first time at answering it. Uh, Kay Nibby says, all the material is wonderful, but in my sales experience, nothing happens until a phone call takes place. What is the quickest path to that all-important phone call? Well, here's an example. You create great content, and then you use that content to move people along in the funnel. So I am very, very proud of this content. Thanks to David and Dennis. You all are absolutely super brilliant. And you are looking at a slide right now where folks, many of you, hopefully, and I, I am pretty certain at least some of you, will schedule a demo uh, with one of our sales team at Apprentice to learn more about Apprentice and try to figure out how those 43 hours can help you build your LinkedIn strategy and execute your LinkedIn strategy. That will literally be a phone call that will lead to sales. So you cannot go directly to sales. There is no path directly to sales. Amen. I mean, I guess there is, but I, I, I've never seen it. So instead, Start with great content to build trust, to build credibility, to bring people into your sales funnel. And over time, when they're ready to buy and when they understand what you have to offer and how that will help solve their problems, they will schedule a phone call with you and then you can sell the heck at them. Dennis or Vivica, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, 100%. no, I mean, you, you definitely want to build that KLT, that no like and trust factor. Um, it, it drives me nuts. And I don't know what it is about LinkedIn that people think they can like invite you to connect and then pitch you. You have not earned the right yet. And yes, phone calls are great, but you want omni channel. You want to hit people up on email and by hit people up. You want to share helpful, valuable content 
via email, text, phone, LinkedIn messaging, in mails, you know, because we never know where people are. And it takes a lot of visibility before you, people feel even like they know you enough to like and trust you enough to take the phone call. So phone calls are great. And in the end, that's what we're going for is that conversation. But a cold call or a cold message asking for the sale before you've earned the right yet, it's it's not going to do you any good. Love it. Um, thoughts about Zopto? I don't know Zopto. Do you guys know Zopto? I don't know Zopto. No. There's so many tools here, guys. Yeah. So bear with us. But um, if they don't know it, it might not be the very best tool yet. But it might be good, but we can't really speak on it. Um, I'm going to scroll back. If I don't get to your question because it's, it was asked a long time ago, feel free to repost it in the chat here, guys. Um, somebody asked, what's the best tool to track LinkedIn employee shares with a CRM? Uh, the interaction from the networks and tied back to HubSpot. Well, obviously HubSpot is the CRM. Does it? Does HubSpot have a, a plug-in to help track employee shares? It, yeah, it, I mean, it did with uh, every uh, everyone's social. Um, I think a lot of the employee uh, advocacy tools do have a HubSpot plug-in. We use HubSpot, so um, we used everyone's social. And I think we're moving oh. over to social HR because their plugin works better, but I don't know. That's a marketing team question. Corinne says it does not. So we will get back okay. to you. Corinne, we will get back to you with a better answer for that. Corinne, HubSpot only track social for 24 hours. Good to know. Thank you. Um, Gunnar wants to know, and then we are just about out of time, guys. So we will take one or two questions, and then Dennis, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you, if you don't mind, since you put the offer out, I'm gonna have you pick the, uh, in just a moment, when you're ready, pick the seventh person uh, in your Twitter feed, the seventh person in your Twitter feed who has tagged you with uh, some insights, and that person's gonna be our grand prize winner, folks. So last chance to get in there and share something if you want to win all three of our books. Gunner says, what first steps would you suggest to companies to take to turn to employees into advocates on LinkedIn? Um, Vivek, I'll, I'll pass this to you in a moment. Yeah. What I will say there, before you even do that, you need to build a great culture where people actually like you. There's a lot of companies where that is not the case. And if that is not the case, you're not ready to turn employees into advocates. So <laughs> the first step is really being uh, employee-centric, thinking about culture, thinking about value, right. And, and, and being the kind of company where people are really happy to work at and proud to work at. And then what? Yeah, and then going back to slide one, um, you know, you really, you wanna, make, you wanna make it simple for your employees. So one really easy way to do that is, uh, and I'm just repeating myself now, but LinkedIn has my company, which um, if, you are, if you are the admin of your company page on LinkedIn, uh, you can go into and recommend content and then your employees just literally when they go to your company page, as long as they're attached to it, as long as they pulled it into their own profiles in the experience section, we'll see it'll take them right to the My Company tab. All the content that you've built out there with the best practices that Dennis and Dave shared earlier will be living and all you have to do is click share post or it might be post share. Anyway, it's just two clicks for them. It shows up as native content on their feed, which LinkedIn likes more. And it's an easy, easy, easy way to turn your employees into advocates. But to Dave's point, if they don't like you, they won't do it. You want, and, and you might need to use a Slack channel or Asana or whatever, you know, whatever tool you're using, email to chat to your entire um, employee base and say, there's a new post up or go check out the po posts and share one today. Um, you got to guide them to the water to make them drink. Please don't use email. Uh, I, I know, I know. I'm just like, Please use another tool for interest. Slack is really great. If you're still yeah. on about Slack, guys, I mean, it's, 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 it's a great one. Okay, final question um, from Danielle. The recommend for you, Vivica, the recommended content to employees. Do you need a minimum follower account in order to do that? No. Amazing. Yeah, there you, you just, there. I think you need a minimum amount of, of employees, but um, it used to be a thousand, uh, used to be a thousand followers, but um, we, we just set a couple companies up that had less than a thousand. So I don't think there is a limit anymore. There used to be. Dennis, uh, the seventh person in your Twitter feed who shared some insight is going to win a copy of my book, your book, and Vivica's right. book is. Dun, dun, dun. It's dun, dun. Richard Bliss. Richard Bliss. Hi, Richard. Oh, you're in a state of bliss, my friend, because you're our grand prize winner, Richard Bliss. 
Congratulations, sir, and thank you. And I hope you don't live in Zimbabwe because the shipping is much more expensive. Listen, <laughs> guys, uh, final plug, 40 hours free with an apprentice, five steps to li.com or scan this QR code, uh, uh, fly S flymsg.io, click that link or scan that QR code and it's free. Uh, Dennis Yu, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Vivica Von Rosen, thank you so much. What a blast this hour has been. Thank you to Harrison and the Apprentice team for helping put it all together. And thanks most of all to you, the viewers, whether you're watching live or recorded, you're the people that make it happen. You're the people that sacrificed your time for this, for us today. And I am truly and deeply grateful. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Recording stopped. We got Dennis back at the end. Oh, I made it. <laughs> I'm telling you that there is a riot here in Pakistan where they shut down the cell phones and sh like all this like stuff's going on. Oh, so I was, I can't believe I was able to make it back here and be able to even get on. Stay safe, dude. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day and uh, look forward day, to next You're really brilliant, brilliant content. Thanks, guys. It's amazing. Bye. I see you. Thanks. Bye.